one million trips between 10 o'clock and 5 o'clock on a Friday and Saturday night. So everybody's out enjoying themselves. Uh, and that, of course, is leading to the night trip, which is going to be open in August on the uh, Central Victoria lines, uh, partly to relieve the surface pressure. Right, moving on swiftly. Uh, this is all in the context, uh, coming back to Sabiq here, uh, of uh, major reduction in funding. This is the Sabiq, this is the Sabiq has uh, talked about the free sphere up to part of his manifesto. This is the government uh, phasing out basically TFL's revenue subsody. Uh, so it's down now, uh, or it will be by 2018 to, to zero. So that's, <coughs> excuse me, that's happening uh, year on year. So uh, all in all, probably. Uh, various figures banded around, but sort of over two billion to find. Uh, so the, the, the mantra is sort of basically do more for less, really. Uh, part of that is also maintenance, looking at uh, how do we how do we keep our assets good and uh, not the most sexy, but they want to keep them roads repaired is uh, absolutely essential. Technology, in, of course, important. Everybody expects to have their app and to find it in the next three buses are coming along. Um, but there's also TFL's <coughs> data which uh, it passes on and uh, allows third party developers to use it to uh, produce a, a range of apps. Uh, right, the other challenges we've got e commerce here. This is with the, the growth in the, um, or the, the online revolution, really, has caused a massive growth um, in white vans. People that drive around London will see that. This is the sort of fastest growing sector in London at the moment. There might be some other. Uh, opportunities there, which uh, you know, will be explored in, in, in years to come, uh, whether that's going to happen or not. Uh, automated, uh, autonomous, sorry, autonomous vehicles, uh, Greenwich actually, Greenwich Peninsula, this is where it's going to be tried. The government is is, is very supportive of developing uh, autonomous cars in the UK, and uh, Greenwich is going to be one of the pilots. Uh, was actually mentioned in the Queen's speech, just uh, sorry to throw that one in. Uh, taxis, uh, we've got sort of the ever-evolving tax and private hire technologies, uh, uh, and Uber, of course, is is one of those mentioned this morning in the news. Uh, the French are, uh, are not too happy about it, and uh, Uber's amazing. I think it's uh, 400 operating 440 cities over 60 countries were the, the headlines. Uh, so that's really some of the, those are the key challenges. I just want to quickly look at some of those in more detail. Um, roads. Uh, 9,200 miles of roads in London, would you believe it? Hey? And uh, 363 of those are the controlled by TFL. This is the, uh, and, and TFL is full of these things, um, uh, this is the TLRN, which is the Transport for London Road Network. Um, now, if you look at that, uh, it's actually, they're, obviously they're the main roads, uh, but it's only 5% of London's total road length. <laughs> but it carries over 30% of London's traffic and 40% of the total economic value of traffic loop across the city. So it's pretty important uh, to keep those going uh, and clear and running. And TFL does that with uh, eye in the sky. Uh, the, the CCTV cameras there and also, bizarrely, um, TFL is the traffic signal authority for all of London. And I suppose it has to be really to ensure that uh, the routes are kept clear. Uh, and we control 6,200 sets of traffic signals. So it's a bit like that patrol. Uh, buses, for the bus system, this is, uh, TFL operates one of the largest and most comprehensive urban bus systems in the world. And 50% uh, of all journeys in England happen in London. Uh, 700. <coughs> bus routes in London, would you believe it? Um, uh, and they carry six and a half million passengers per day. Uh, and this is a, an interesting stat. 2.4 billion bus passengers a year, which is a third of the world's population. Which is just incredible. So just remember that when you, when you jump on your bus the next time. Of course, routes are all over London. This is obviously central London. These are all routes which have got at least one or more um, buses running along it uh, in terms of those routes. 20% uh, of bus trips in central London, so 80% uh, of bus mileage and bus travel in a, is outside zone one. So pretty important really for connecting uh, different parts of, uh, of London. Uh, and 95% uh, of those of Londoners actually live within 400 metres 
of one of the capitals, sorry, it's more stats, 19,500 plus stops. So uh, let's move swiftly on to cycling, which I'm sure we all love. Um, this is really in its infancy. It's, uh, it's, it's seen major growth since 2000, of course, Boris really sort of championed this uh, with Mr. Gilligan uh, and others. Uh, it's an increasingly important mode. Uh, uh, as you can see from the number of journeys per day, uh, currently it's probably about 2% mode share across London, but in certain areas, and Hackney was uh, identified as one of those, uh, it, it's, it's much higher than that. Uh, target is for 1.5 million a day by 2026. And of course, what's going to help that is the provision of, uh, this was the city I put in for the East West Cycle Superhighway. Uh, this is reality. Uh, amazing for those of you that uh, have had the privilege, I think it is, cycling along it. It makes that journey uh, absolutely fantastic. It really is very, very easy and uh, fun to do when it's not raining. Mini Hollands, uh, these have uh, been operated in the sort of quieter areas outside central London. A number of boroughs uh, bid for those. Uh, and those have looked, this is a sort of before and after, <laughs> making the area more, more bike friendly. Um, now, uh, they were the Boris bikes, uh, but they still brought that so, to some extent. Um, but Santander have those now. Again, one of those sort of contracted services I've talked about. <laughs> Second largest public bicycle hire system in Europe after Paris. Um, uh, I won't give you any more of those stats, but it was launched in July 2010, uh, and there have been lots and lots of trips. I think the record is 73,000 in one day, so that's huge, hugely well used. Freight, very quickly, 90% freight in London is moved by road, uh, so keeping those arteries moving is vital. Uh, Peter Hendy, who's a former commissioner, said, uh, you know, if the beer runs out in the pubs, Bread in the supermarket section will be the first to know about it. He's absolutely right, uh, we would. It's, it's really important uh, in keeping uh, London London moving and, and uh, service servicing basically all the businesses and, uh, and everything else uh, that, that uh, all, all people are buying stuff online. Uh, now I'm going to flick through this because I'm sure we've had enough, uh, but there are 70% of London's traffic is, is, is freight. Uh, this, I put this in just because of the cycling, it's quite important. A lot of uh, HGVs coming into, uh, coming into London, uh, and it's being fairly well advertised, there have been issues with cycling. There are TFLs working with uh, the, uh, the industry to improve uh, visibility for cyclists and to make modifications which uh, reduce the emissions and, uh, and do all those sorts of things. So just very quickly, low emissions. Uh, this covers Greater London, uh, and if you haven't got a vehicle which uh, is compliant, you have to pay one, between 100 and 200 pounds. That congestion charging, which you know about, that raises a huge amount of money, uh, which is going to be extremely fenced into improving transport, and in the economic cli climate, it's going to be increasingly important. Taxes and private hire, that's how many licensed black cabs there are when you want one, you can never see one, can you? But um, uh, there's also licensed, uh, <coughs> so private, private hire as well, uh, quite a few of those. London Underground, I shall whiz through this. Uh, I thought it was great, that was the first, uh, when, it was a, when it was launched uh, in, in 2007, that was the first, uh, first poster, which was very nice. But very important, moves a lot of people around. Uh, similarly, the trams uh, carries 32 million people per year. Um, and I do like moving through this because I'm getting some stuff. So I want to get into an interesting bit, really. Um, yeah, not saying that this isn't, of course. Uh, but the DLR is second most popular on that railway after the Tunnel Wave Metro. Uh, and then there's the Metro Rail Network. Uh, projects. Uh, projects. 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 So that's really just that's a quick skip through what service is all about. Uh, absolutely incredible in terms of the, uh, the amount of the network that, that covers uh, and what it needs to do and the challenges. Uh, I just thought I'd show you a few projects very quickly just to show the sort of range of work that we do. Um, Bow Roundabout, which is uh, not far from here. Um, this is a sort of junction of basically two major roads, uh, the A12, as it uh, charges out one of those roads. Routes and Tiffel's working with Town and Newham to make the bow safer, 
more accessible and a better connected um, part of the network. And the trouble is, on this side, there's an established community on the other side, massive, massive regeneration, but uh, quite a difficult uh, journey for people to get to and from that. So, <laughs> producing a, an interim scheme, uh, which is sort of creating these connections through much better crossing, lighting, uh, bespoke wayfinding, uh, a cycle hub is going to be located there. Uh, that's actually on site now. Uh, the idea in the future is that the flyover gets moved entirely and uh, it becomes a much more attractive junction. Royal Docks, very appropriate. <laughs> this is um, something we work with the GLA and London Borough of Newham to, to produce the Royal Docks uh, transport guidance here. Uh, it's about, obviously, as you'd expect with the docks, which are fantastic, but are going to create a huge amount of segments. It's about how do, you, how do you improve the network, how do you create linkages with outside the area to different parts, to the Canary Wharf, to the east, south of the river, across and through to North Newham. Uh, and that guidance has uh, detailed specifications of street types and that to show how all the modes can be accommodated. Uh, it's been very warmly received, I think. Uh, I think the castle just very quickly. Apologies about the quality of the picture, but um, for those of you that uh, know and remember that, uh, that's gone now. This was a, uh, basically it was a roundabout, a gyratory, it was more or less. Uh, it was built in the 1950s, uh, massive segments, and the, the area in the centre wasn't really used and populated, and it took a long time to walk around it. Um, so this is one of a number of schemes which is called peninsula, what we've called peninsularisation, where what we've tried to do <coughs> is to join up parts of that, move the road around it, make the road uh, two-way, uh, which is safer, accommodate um, cycle, uh, better crossings, at grade crossings, uh, and use the area for uh, great public development in the centre. That's actually <coughs> The interim scheme is being constructed. There are ideas to sort of broaden that. Um, we just want to think of the architects. We're looking for what's among the architects that designed uh, the space. So uh, we, do, we do tend to work with some very, very good architects. Auburn Circus, uh, central London location. Uh, this was before uh, a bewildering area of tarmac. Um, uh, this is what we've changed that into now with uh, much better improvements to public space, cycle routes, uh, advanced stop lines for cyclists, and safer, more frequent pedestrian crossings. And that's transformed the area. Uh, I wouldn't be right if I didn't say something about crossrail urban integration. We did do quite a lot of work with, uh, with, with local authorities. Uh, that was the route, Crossrail 1, which is opening in 2019. Uh, working, and this is, a, this is a quote from someone I don't know, um, but uh, it's basically it was about how, how could you, how can you sort of build other stations, uh, uh, repair the damage that's done in order in creating work sites to build this fantastic infrastructure with, with new development uh, and better public realm around them. That's Bond Street, this is Tom Court Road. Uh, working with uh, Santa Williams, I think the architects here that we worked with, uh, which is, and you can come out of those fantastic <coughs> glass structures now. Uh, of course, it's not only above ground, it's also this below, massive amount of below ground works. Uh, just an uh, example of some of the, this is Paddington actually with the Western Wing architects, um, and uh, that's the entrance into the platform. Uh, Crossrail 2, we're also doing, uh, you'll be pleased to know this is the last slide. Um, this, is, uh, this hasn't been submitted yet, uh, so it hasn't gone through the process, but we're doing a huge amount of work. Crossrail 1 was east west, this is north south, looking from Hertfordshire down to, you can't really see that, but it's sort of Kingston and uh, uh, places down to the south. So connecting, really connecting the outer parts of London and outside London. Uh, with the very center of the world. The end at last. Thank you so much. <laughs>